Okay, this is a Techniques 1200 turntable, and um, what I've got going on is the uh, the little light here that pops up. Normally, it's an incandescent bulb. Uh, that's burned out. I'm going to go ahead and replace that. What I've done is I've actually gone out and bought one of these kits that actually has an LED and a 10K resistor, and they've soldered some hookup leads onto it. Um, you could probably... Grab any LED, you know, roughly of this size. I wanted to get something that I knew would fit and, um, and get the instructions on how to do this and um, show how it works out. So this way I don't have to do any worrying about whether I got the right size of LED, whether it would fit within that little housing there. So um, we're going to first remove the platter, which I've already done. There's two holes in it. You take the mat off, the two holes in the platter, and you carefully lift up, taking care not to bang or chip the magnet on the, any of the metal down here when it comes off. Next, we're going to remove these five screws around the edge of this black plastic service cover and get this off of the uh, turntable. Okay, now that we've got that cover removed, uh, the wires from the lamp are here, This, uh, in this case an orange and brown, and they go under the PC board to this connector here. And I notice also that uh, this one happens to have some uh, heat shrink tubing on it, so I don't know if it's been replaced in the past or not. But I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this connector here and pull it back so I've got some slack to remove the... Uh, the lamp assembly. Okay, next we've got to turn the turntable over. Now I've removed the cartridge and I'm going to put the dust cover on it and use that for support, but you're going to want to support it in a way, of course, that you protect the tone arm assembly because it's very heavy and you don't want to uh, damage that. Okay, now that we've got it upside down, I've got a piece of foam underneath the uh, dust cover, although this one is pretty scratched up. And we're just going to unscrew the four feet, remove them from the bottom. Okay, now that the feet are off, I've got to remove all of the screws that hold this rubber cover on the bottom to the turntable. So I'm going to take these off now. It's quite a few. It's going to take me a little while to do it. Best to use an electric drill when you're removing these screws, first to loosen them. And then I find if you take your finger and kind of pull them out, at an angle while pushing up against the side you can remove the screw and these uh, aluminum spacers that are on many of them now the short ones like these will not have it where the chassis comes up through the bottom of the, the rubber material but uh, on these other ones again lift and apply side pressure it doesn't look like this one had one and so on. So just that tip to help you get these out and then you can keep the screw together with the spacer. There's different lengths and you can figure all of that out too but it'll save you time. Okay here's what it looks like once you get the the bottom cover off. So well, here's the item of interest the light assembly. There's two Phillips screws that need to be removed now to uh, get that out of there. Okay so you remove those two screws and this assembly comes out. Now we need to get inside, get the bulb out, and get the replacement LED in. Okay, there's that small set screw there in the middle of the screen on the, on the shaft. That needs to be removed first. You have to extend the light in order to see that. Normally it's hidden inside the, uh, the enclosure. You'll need a jewel or screwdriver to get it. It's, it's uh, very small. Okay, once that small set screw is released the uh, cover will come off of the lamp now it's free and then that exposes the lamp I'm gonna go ahead and uh, the leads come for power leads so the light come through the bottom I'm gonna go ahead and cut these wires and pull the light out of there okay so the bulb slides out of this plastic housing by pushing and then you've got the uh, the, the plastic housing you can put your LED wires through it. Looks like it's got a very 
narrow little opening there, which I can't quite get into focus. Okay, I'm finding that the LED will not fit all the way down into the housing here because of the uh, heat shrink and the, the leads attaching to the bottom of the LED. The hole here is not big enough. So I'm going to uh, drill it. This will give me a chance to use my $5 knockoff Dremel and um, enlarge that hole so I can get the LED in there. Okay, once you get the thing drilled out where the LED will fit, that's what it looks like. It's slid in there. I'm going to reuse this piece of uh, Teflon and put it over the leads here. This is what guided and protected the wires as they traveled through the uh, pop-up assembly here. Kept them from getting uh, chafed on the metal and shorting out. So I've got the Teflon or heat shrink. You could always possibly use another piece of heat shrink, but uh, I don't have this size. And I'm just going to use it as a guide now. It's holding the two wires together and push that through the uh, pop-up. All right, so here's what it looks like once it's installed. And the next thing I'm going to do is connect the wires. I'm soldering, and we're going to connect red to the orange lead through a um, 10K resistor. And the white will go to the black in this case. That's the way they sent this thing to me. Also, this uh, resistor will need to be clipped off of the uh, power, the switch for the light. That, uh, it's like it's 101.5K, perhaps. Oh, it seems a little high, but yeah, I think that's a 1500 ohm there. So I'm finding the cover will not fit over the LED here. I'm going to, uh, because it's too long, I'm going to remove about one millimeter of the top plastic of the LED and see if I can get the you know the cover to line up with the set screw hole here. I got things hooked up and found that the LED wasn't working and I made um, a couple of mistakes. Well one anyway. Uh, there's white and red and I made the assumption that red was positive. Well it wasn't. And number two was the resistor they supply with this kit was a 1k. It wasn't a 100k. I, I'm must have not been reading the display on the meter well in the light. And so I believe I popped that diode. So I went and bought another one that's more appropriate to this. It has a flat top on it. It fit in there without having to do any modifications. And I used a 4.7K, which uh, at 20 volts still runs it uh, way below its, its limit. So it should last a nice long time. So I'm going to get this uh, reinstalled and put back together. All right, well, here's the finished product. Got the LED installed, and the camera doesn't pick it up too well, but it is lighting up the record there in a band, a narrow band across. So uh, that completes the incandescent to LED conversion for the Techniques 1200 MK2. Thanks for watching.